you ever see, the ship's moving around a little bit, it's going to move around some more. You know, you walk around and you don't see people covered with sweat today for a change. And uh, the boat's moving, it's a little drier, it's going to get even drier than that, and the boat's going to move some more. So let's get out and tie things down and make sure we're ready for that. We're heading down to Australia. Um, the sea's pretty good size, good swells. I think the deck's all the way up to 30 plus feet. I haven't seen pitching decks like this since maybe 1985, 20 years ago in the North Atlantic, and uh, had not seen the deck move quite this much. You would think that five months into cruise that we would be pretty proficient. I think we are, but you know, here we're out doing pitching deck. Do I agree with it or disagree? It's not for me to say. It's probably a little bit beyond where we need to be. Taking off and landing on an aircraft here is, um, from a pilot standpoint, is a is a perishable skill. We've learned over the years that. Uh, a certain amount of practice in certain conditions is required to maintain the capability to do that professionally and well. This is absolutely more dangerous than it was actually flying missions in the Gulf. Go get them. We got lucky in the Gulf. The seas are pretty calm. But out here, pitching decks, this is scarier. You still gotta go back and land on the boat. <laughs> This is a landing area. You know, it normally looks about like that. All of a sudden, you're kind of seeing it like this, and then seeing it like that. So you have to do all your normal procedures. But now you add to it the visual perception here that is changing, and you can't decide if it's your mind or the boat. That's that's why it's such a challenge. Your brain, when you come aboard, you kind of start to think that the runway is a fixed object. And that's what you reference things on, where it's not a fixed object and it's actually moving. It'll kill you in a second. You know, you won't be the first one to fly into the water behind the ship. Or to hit the back of the ship or miss the whole landing area or do a long bolter and end up in the water. It's a dangerous job. Strap the waist, strap the waist, make a ready deck. Paddles, lens is on, you have control. Three and a half, three, glide slope, targeting three wire. Stand by to recover aircraft. Yes. What a paddles does is uh, we go up onto the back of the ship and we're there in case the, uh, the pilots need us to help them uh, land their aircraft. For us on the platform, we have simply the plat camera. We have a set of crosshairs on there where the plane should be, like right in the middle of those crosshairs. We, uh, we have the radios, we talk to the pilots, we give them more information than they could receive from the ship, basically to help them get aboard. When, when you're coming aboard, you're aiming for that uh, third wire and uh, the OK pass. When you don't hit a wire at all, if you put in a little bit too much power there at the end and uh, you touch down past the wires, 
and have to go back around again. It's called a bolter. Just watching. I got some pilots that I worry about. Because, you know, the first thing, you don't want to lose anybody. And number two, the airplanes are pretty expensive, and it's tax dollars. You know, if they go to the bottom of the ocean, there's not a whole lot you can do with them. Okay. He misses his wheel off. Okay. Wagon. Wag him now. He's looking pretty good, though. Easy with it, easy with it, easy with it, easy with it. Until he's climbing now. He's out See of Keep the hawk on him means we need to keep the tanker on him to watch him because if he misses again, he's going to have to be tanked for sure. He's going to bring around ball 5.5. Roger ball, 28 knots mobile. Here we go, see if he lands. He won't miss. Chicken bone, chicken bone, chicken bone. He did the last time. And not by a little either. <laughs> he about hooked it. Look at, look at him now. Beautiful. Symmetrical, beautiful. No, now he's chasing. Uh-uh, no, 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 he's in there. Look at that. That's pretty. Yeah. Down. Get down. See ya. Out of there. Keep the hawk on him. Keep the hawk on him, for sure. Yes, sir. It'll definitely be trick or treat for 2.5. Yes, sir. Trick or treat 2.5. Trick or treat means that, you know, it's like going door to door. Trick or treat, and then he's going to give him 2,500 pounds of gas. We cannot afford to have an aircraft. That's starved for fuel. The Nimitz is uh, 700 miles away from the nearest uh, divert field. No one was going to make it 700 miles. It's simply a different feeling when you know there's no divert available. There's no safety net out and around the aircraft carrier that you can go to if you have some emergency with your airplane. You have to land back on this ship. Come left, steer course, 112 degrees. Come left, steer course, 112 degrees, aye. The choices are either to land on the ship or jump out alongside the ship. I'm uncomfortable with the conditions, so we decided to scrub uh, the remaining night events, but we still had aircraft we need to recover in the dark. No matter how long you do this business, you never, you never get used to the nighttime. At night, your visual is not as accurate as it is in the daytime. So you can get vertigo. You now they always tell people to respect nature, respect the sea, never turn your back on the ocean. I mean, all the little things that you learn. It's the same thing. You better respect the night. Well, we've got uh, 12 airplanes airborne, and uh, we're going to have to launch three tankers to put some extra gas uh, in the air in case the guys have trouble getting aboard. The problem with doing that, though, is we also have to land those airplanes. So the more the more people you put in the skies, the more planes you have to land. One of, one of my jobs this evening is uh, to be a recovery tanker for the jets coming down, and, and I'm feeling like basically this is crazy, and uh, what, you know what, what's the uh, what's the point of doing all this? When I think I'm going to go, the deck is down, so they actually sit there and wait for another five or six seconds to, so they don't shoot you into the water, more or less. When it comes to pitching deck, I would say that I am uh, uh, more of a novice, or at least my experience has been limited. And I, I know enough to know that the, the conditions we're starting to get uh, extreme would be a, a fair way to, to characterize them. Look at that. Those are going to get in that Huh? I didn't know a big rig like this could move like this.